All right, welcome everyone to the inaugural Directed IRA podcast. These are two, uh, you know, experienced Ooh. podcasters, Matt Sorensen and Mark Kohler here, excited for this the new podcast. It's taken us 400 to a podcast to get it right. So now we finally said, let's start a good podcast. It's yeah. Time. Yeah. So we've had the Refresher Wealth podcast, which is now the Main Street Business podcast, 400 yeah. episodes, as Mark talked about. And we are self-directed geeks ourselves. We self-direct our own retirement accounts. We're both tax lawyers. We've been helping clients for over 15 years, 20 years almost do this with their retirement account. We have a trust company, Directed IRA and Directed Trust Company, directedira.com, where we help and set up self-directed accounts, all types of accounts. And, and so- And the law firm. I mean- at the law firm where- lawyers. Yeah. You know, it was the year 2000 when I had a client walk into my office and say, I'm self-directing my IRA. And I said, what in the heck are you talking about? <laughs> and I yeah. guess that's what this first show is about. We're going to answer that question. I mean, yeah. I, I had a client explain it to me 20 years ago. Literally, it's kind of like an yeah. anniversary uh, podcast. But And then Mark explained it to me in 2006. Yeah. And I was like, they didn't teach this in law school. And there's there back then there was no good books on it now. Yeah. And let me tell everybody, I, I created Frankenstein or a monster because yeah. Matt Sorensen come to, came to join the firm. He was an associate. I was running a solo practice at the time and took this leap of faith to hire an associate. And uh, I couldn't have got luckier. The awesomest guy, Matt Sorensen. And uh, oh, our producer just went, oh, okay. So yeah, that was a special moment here in the studio. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, when Matt joined the firm, we ultimately became partners in the law firm. And when I taught him about these self-directed IRAs, here's the Frankenstein that occurred. He took it and ran. I mean, yeah. since then, Matt has become the foremost expert in the country. He's written two best-selling books on it. And I just think he's pretty awesome. So I still know more than Matt generally, but on this topic, you know, I, yeah, this is I, one you I would give concede. it up. You concede, yeah, the Mark. Yeah. So, uh, but you humbly, know, and Mark's very humbly. I say that. very humbly. Okay, thank you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I always tell people you don't know, want to know what I think about everything in general, but this I do know. Okay, <laughs> this I know. And if you're on this, you've probably thought about self-directing your IRA, or maybe you already are doing it and you're geeking out on it. And so we're gonna break it down through the podcast. We'll be updating on new things talking about specific topics, different assets you might be interested in, cool things we're seeing clients do. One of the cool things about being here at Directed IRA, I mean, this is, I mean, if you're watching the video version of this, I'm like, in, you know, this is the corporate office of Directed IRA. Like I'm seeing the transactions coming through and what are we processing and what are people investing with their accounts? And it's just interesting to see the different things uh, clients are putting their money into. So yeah. very cool. And from an education standpoint, I'm here in the studio, as you can see, where we've shot hundreds of videos between us over the years, teaching people about small business and retirement accounts and self-directing. And, and we feel that if your accountant or your lawyer isn't teaching you these strategies, why are you using them for your general yeah. consultations? I mean, seriously, we have clients that come to us and then go teach their professional about it and yeah. hold it. I thought that was supposed to be the other way around. So, yeah. or we, their we, financial advisor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we think we believe strongly in our weekly newsletter, our podcast. Uh, we've both written several books and if we're not yeah. out educating, we're, we're not doing our job because you can't pay your consultant every hour to learn every little thing. And so we want to provide information that's affordable or free. At, at yeah. Least. yeah. All right. Well, well, I just want you guys to know who we are. If you're okay. new to this, maybe you've been on our Main Street Business Podcast, Refresh Your Wealth for 400 episodes. And you're like, I get it. I know who you guys are. Just start talking, okay? And <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so, but today we're going to keep it simple. And I want this to be for someone who is like, I've heard about this or someone told me about it, but I don't even know what the heck it is. Like, break it down for me. What is a self-directed IRA? Yeah, and for those of you that already know what a self-directed IRA is and you're listening going, all right, are these guys going to tell me something new? No, probably not. But this is a great podcast to share 
because you may be trying to explain it to your business partner, your significant other, a child, a parent, a spouse, and they, and you're like stumbling through it and they don't get, they don't believe you. They think you're crazy. So this is a great podcast that you can familiarize yourself with this and get, you know what? Just go listen to these guys, listen to their first podcast. If they don't blow your mind with the potential of what yeah. you could do with a directed IRA, then who no one else will. I mean, yeah. I, we, we've got some great stories and examples to share today. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's just break it down. What the heck is a self-directed IRA? And then Mark and I will, will volley back, you know, maybe get up into the net and, you know, since you're the uh, expert, I'm sure, going to let yeah. you take first stab, sure. but I had kind of a take I was going to say initially, if you're open okay. to an audible, I'm calling an audible okay. if you're open. All right. All right. I'm okay. you like, uh, called okay. like Omaha at the line. Omaha. Yeah. Okay. Omaha. Right. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go Omaha. with it. Omaha. Let's 42. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. What is the NFL? Do they still, are they playing this year? Whatever. Okay. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's the deal. Here's what I would say right out of the gate. When we say self-directed IRA, we're not just talking about IRAs. I think yeah. that's one of the first points that you've got to know. If I may, Matt, I, yeah. I, I think people need to know uh, any sort of retirement account that's tax preferred, a traditional IRA, a Roth, a 401k, a 401k Roth, a defined benefit plan, a SEP, and even a Coverdell education account yep. or health savings account. When we say self-directed IRA, we mean self-directed retirement account of any of those. Yeah. It's just easier to say IRA. Is that a fair starting point, Matt? Yeah, that's great. And I think um, we do them all at Directed IRA, by the way. Mark and I, I self-direct a Roth IRA and a 401k. Mark self-directs a Roth IRA and an HSA, just to give you an example. And there's a lot of people that self-direct their traditional IRA and have solo Ks. And so everyone's a little different in what accounts sometimes that you already have or what accounts you want to start brand new with. And so, and we'll get to that on how, where are you sitting now with what account you have and how do you get to a self-directed IRA? That's an important topic too in this. Yeah. So, so let's say what a self-directed IRA is. And then like Mark said, this could be any of those accounts that Mark rattled off. But basically, it's an account that can invest in any asset allowed by law. And a lot of people think, okay, like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Well, those are assets allowed by law, but they're not the only ones, right? And the, the only restrictions that you have that you can't buy with an IRA, there's only three of them. Right? People are like shocked. The only three things you cannot buy with an IRA is life insurance, S corporation stock, and certain collectible items. That's it. Yeah. That's it. It's crazy. Now, some of you may go, well, these guys are crazy. And if you remember back at the beginning, I said 20 years ago, I heard about this. They'd already been yeah. around for 10 years before I heard about it. These institutions like Directed IRA that started out in the back room of someone's house, you know, <laughs> you know yeah. 30 years ago, um, were up against Wall Street. Wall Street does not like this. They yeah. have created a system where their structure is based on commissions in the trade or management yeah. of Wall Street assets, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, all those goodies. And so their people and their institutions make money off of those types of investments. Yeah. But when you get into this other area of, oh, I want my IRA to invest in a restaurant down the street or a yeah. landscaping company or a rental property, they're like, hold it. We don't make money on that. We're not going to tell people that they can actually do that. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of like and so what some people do is they're like, all right, I, hey, Matt, I have an IRA at Merrill Lynch. And I called them and I said, I want to buy this rental property down the street because I heard you said I could buy real estate with an IRA. Yeah, you could do that. You could buy real estate. But Merrill Lynch said, I can't do that. No, it's not because your IRA can't do that. It's because your IRA at Merrill Lynch can't do that. All right. So the first thing to understand is retirement accounts can invest in any asset allowed by law. This could be rental real estate, a private company, a fund, an LLC, crypto, precious metals. I mean, there's all these assets are allowed and, and notes. These are common things people invest in with self-directed accounts. The problem is 
you got to get to a custodian or provider of the IRA or whatever the account is who allows you to do it. And most of the broker dealers, like Mark was saying, you know, you call your financial advisor or a broker dealer, well, what do they sell? Financial products. Yeah. It's like going to Taco Bell and asking for a roast beef sandwich. Okay. You can eat roast beef sandwiches. You just don't get them at Taco Bell. And if you keep asking Taco Bell for roast beef sandwich, they're going to be giving you chalupas and burritos. You know what I mean? And so that's like, by the way, that Taco Bell is Merrill Lynch in the example. And <laughs> I guess the roast beef sandwiches would be directed IRA with the, <laughs> the self-directed yeah. account. I don't, I think I prefer Taco Bell over yeah. Arby's actually. I screwed that one up, but, no. uh, but you know what I mean? So you got to get to a place whose accounts let you self-direct and invest in these types of non-publicly traded assets. Now, I just pulled it up on my phone. Some of you are like, why is Kohler, you know, texting his wife while he's on this podcast? I wanted to pull up the current value of what has become known. Now, we're going to come back into more details here. But if some of you are like, hold it, I don't get it yet. Hang tight. Let's give a couple examples to put some, some flavor to this, which I think helps. Every year, this year, you can put $6,000 in a Roth or a traditional IRA or $1,000 more if you're 50 or older. So if you're age 50 or older, you could do $7,000. And then you think like a monopoly board. Oh, I'll invest in some stock and then next year it might be worth $1,000 more if I'm lucky and I'll put in another thousand. And then in about five years, maybe it'll be worth you know, thirty dollars or $40,000. That's great. That's a Roth IRA. Thank you. No, 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 no. Here's the real vision you want to think about is that if you're not just going to buy stocks and ETFs that might get a six to eight or 9% return if you're lucky, but you could invest in startups or again, real estate or notes or wholesales or cryptocurrency. When you're going around the monopoly board, if you hit boardwalk and quadruple or 10 times your money, that's okay. When you pass go, you get another 200 bucks. Yeah. So, but you can grow the account, of course, as large as you want. And so one of the best examples was Peter Thiel, who was a PayPal founder, actually had his Roth IRA invested in PayPal as, as, as an investor with other people. But the biggest investment he made that really hit was he was the first outside investor in Facebook. And if you know that movie, The Social Network, right, where they're like getting their first outside investor and, you know, it's showing Justin the Timberlake's story. there. Yeah, Justin Timberlake's there. And I think he's the one that made the connection. He was um, Sean Parker, I think, was the character he played. Yeah. The music guy. My that started uh, uh, Napster. Napster, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, so he makes this connection. And, and Peter Till saw the vision of what social media could be and Facebook. And he's a, you know, a very savvy investor, tech guy. And so he's like, I'm going to put money in for my Roth IRA. So he bought this stock and invested in Facebook with the Roth IRA. Well, his, his Roth IRA is now worth a billion dollars. You know, he's one of the largest shareholders of Facebook outside of like Mark Zuckerberg. And so he's, he's, he's sold his shares over time, but he's on the board still, I think, of Facebook. But that's a classic example of using a Roth IRA to invest in what you know. Because that's another topic we want to hit today. Why do people self-direct? We like people to invest in what they know. And, and Peter Till would be a good example. Um, another high profile person would be Mitt Romney, right? Mm -hmm. He was yeah. like a consultant for kind of turnarounds and private equity deals. And, and Bain so, Capital. Yeah, with his company, Bain Capital. And his, his self-directed IRA came all out during his presidential run and what, how he invested his IRA. Because like, he had like a $30 million IRA. And they're like, how do you even have that much in an IRA? <laughs> Again, you can only put 6000 a year. And how, do you even, how did you even do that? Well, he invested in what he knew. He didn't just go buy a mutual fund. Okay. Yeah. He invested in the deals and the stuff that he saw in his business and took advantage of opportunities and what he knew. And that's how he's able to grow and have a large account. Okay, now I'm going to, I, two points. I'm going to do keep it basic for one other, uh, my next thought. I have, would suggest if any of you are already a little fascinated by this going, hold it, I can take a retirement account like a Roth, the gross tax-free and comes out tax-free. And any of these other accounts we listed at the top of the hour here, I'll talk about my HSA here in a minute. But you can invest in those and get a better return than Wall Street because you invest in what you know. 
So I have a video out on YouTube I'd suggest you look, look up. Yeah. Just type million dollar Roth Kohler or million dollar Roth. It should come up. It's close to a million views now. And when you get on that video, I use the example that Dave Ramsey uses. Dave Ramsey says, hey, if you start now and just start saving a few thousand dollars a year, he gives an example of how important savings is. And I yeah. love Dave Ramsey for that. But he uses a model of about a 10% return. And he gets hate mail for that. People are like, where are you getting a 10% return? And he's like, it's just an example. Chill out, right? Well, I start using an example of 15 or 20%. And it's like, it's the Salem witch trials. I'm going to get lynched. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I uh, well, sorry, that's a bad example. Salem witch trials burned at the stake. And so I'm going to get burned at the stake because I proposed that someone might get 20%. Guys, yeah. we have see it every day. Clients that are doing 20% or more every year in their Roth accounts, if not sometimes doubling them in a oh, year's yeah, time, it, easily. Yeah. And that's the power of self-directing. Yeah. And it's um, think of what you already know. What are you good at? Where do you see opportunity? A lot of self-directed investors are, frankly, in the real estate industry. A lot of our clients and they just know it better. They find deals better. When they're picking a mutual fund to put best their accountant, they don't know. How many of you know? Think right now if you're listening, what's a good mutual fund to go invest into? You uh, don't know. Yeah. You know, and you don't know what stock is good to invest in until you hear the news that Tesla stock is now great. You know, it's like, oh, well, well, don't invest in it now. It's already gone up. You know, it's like, yeah, so, yeah. so you got to invest in, and try to beat Wall Street. Well, you're not plugged in like Wall Street, but where are you plugged in? What do you know and have a competitive advantage on? Maybe it's the real estate in your community. Maybe it's some like you're like a Peter Till and you see businesses you can invest in and startups, or maybe you come across private funds or deals, or, or you do private lending. That's another big category of self-directed accounts. People do private lending. So um, we get a lot of crypto clients too that have, have made a lot of money on cryptocurrency um, with their accounts. So all these things are available and we're not here to tell you what to invest in. We're just here to say, you can take control and you can take control of your retirement and invest in the things you know. You're not just stuck to Wall Street. Now, if you want to invest in Wall Street, cool. And maybe you do a little bit of that and you self direct I don't know. Everyone's different. We just want to let people know you can do this. It's possible. And, and we'll break down the rules throughout the, the history of this podcast, but I want to give a good intro. Yeah. And that's, I was just going to say that, Matt, it's funny you said that, is that someone listening is probably going, well, hold it. That sounds too good to be true. There's got to be some rules. And there are. They're surprisingly yeah. not that hard. But heaven forbid you hear Steve Kramer on Mad Money or you go see your Merrill Lynch yeah. advisor. They're going to go, oh my gosh, you're going to have a prohibited transaction and you're going to have this thing distributed and the penalties and the taxes. You're going to screw this up and you're playing with a loaded gun. You don't know what you're doing. And they're going to try to scare you out of doing this because they want to manage your money. You have yeah. to remember where you're getting that advice. And when we help clients at Directed IRA self-direct, we're not getting a, a, a fee to manage your money. We're not getting a brokerage fee to help you sell it. Um, in fact, many, many people are refreshed to see that the fees that can be buried in a 401k are, yeah. are all eliminated. You can even manage your own 401k. And so there's all these, these opportunities, but there are rules. Yeah. And as Matt said, in some, you'll see in the podcast history there, and as it comes out as a regular listener, we'll be soon to be shooting a prohibited transaction podcast that'll tell you what the rules are, but that yeah. you can easily live within them. Yeah. And what I always tell clients is when you start self-directing your IRA, it's like playing a new board game. You've never done it before and you can't just like open up and start moving the pieces and playing cards. You don't know what the heck you're doing. You've got to read the rule book or you got to play with someone who's done it before or maybe listen to a podcast that teaches yeah. you the game. Okay. Yeah. Now the rule book of course is the self-directed IRA handbook by yours truly as it's 19 <laughs> chapters, about 330 pages on self-directed IRAs. It's like everything you need to know, but everybody doesn't need to read every chapter. Like if you just want to learn to do real estate, read, there's probably about six chapters to read it. If you want to learn everything, read all 19. But it's a comprehensive book that I wrote that's got over 100 citations that teach you. So that's the rule book. Yep. Or you can play with someone you know, another investor, hire an attorney, one of our people at KQS Lawyers. Um, you know, just get educated yourself. 
But yeah. the thing is, it's also like a board game because once you've played it once or twice, it's the same thing over and over again. You've learned it. Okay. Now, I want to take a turn here with another analogy. If some of you are still here saying, okay, hold it, tell us, you still really haven't explained what a self-directed IRA is per se. Well, we're yeah. trying to, it's <laughs> kind of tricky. It still is a retirement account. It still follows the same rules that uh, upon retirement and penalties and this and that, and you want to build this money for the future. Very Dave Ramsey-esque. We're not going to play with this money now. We want it to be there for the future. Yeah. Um, but the analogy I like is that the self-directed IRA is like a, a vehicle. It's like a sports car. In fact, I'm going to say this. An IRA is like a vehicle. An IRA could be a truck. It could be a sports car or yeah. a, a delivery truck. It's a vehicle. Now, who's going to drive your vehicle? Are you going to get uh, Charles Schwab to drive your vehicle, TD Ameritrade to drive your vehicle, or Merrill Lynch? That's what the name on the side of the vehicle is going to be, or it could be a brand. Well, what's nice about the self-directed IRA vehicle is that you kick out the driver and you sit in the driver's seat, and you get to decide who's in the back seat. It could be a stock. It could be an ETF. It could be cryptocurrency. It could be a rental property. So now you're driving the car and deciding who's in the back seat rather than letting your stockbroker, for lack of a better word, or this institution with an app on your phone, they're deciding as the driver of the car. You're just in the front seat going, oh, this is nice. And you're looking out the window, but you have no control. They're yeah. choosing who's in the back seat. So it's a, the same type of IRA or 401k that you would see anywhere, which people generally equate, well, a 401k is a stockbroker's account. No, 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 no. The 401k is the vehicle. What you put in the back seat is up to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, of course, you want to put the best assets in the back seat that are going to grow in value. Okay. And so, and that's where self directing comes in is a lot of people pursue a self directed IRA because they think, oh, I can get a better return if I do a private money loan at 10% and two points secured on real estate than I can owning a mutual fund or having a CD that my IRA owns, or I can do better with the real estate or a startup or whatever the, or the, you know, private company, whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, so, so that's how the account grows. Now, I think a lot of people approach it different. Some people come to a self-directed IRA because they want hard assets, you know, like they, it's like, I, I don't want to buy a piece of paper that's a, or something electronic. I don't even know what the stock is or what mutual fund it is. I want a piece of real estate I can look at. Um, or I can go see that's tangible, or I want a small company I can understand. So um, you get a lot of that with self-directed IRAs too, is more tangible assets. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like right. it. And now, it's you want to hear some examples hard, right? of? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, Matt, because someone's going to say, "Well, this has got to be hard. There's probably a penalty, or there's probably taxes to take my money from Merrill Lynch and go to directed IRA, right? Come on, Matt. Where's the cost in the transfer? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you have an account fee, all right? That's pretty much it. So it's kind of like going from Merrill Lynch to Charles Schwab, okay? You're going to go from Merrill Lynch to directed IRA. And if you have a, a traditional IRA, let's say at Merrill Lynch, you're going to roll it over to a traditional IRA at directed IRA. It, we just have self-directed accounts that will let you buy these alternative assets in. Yeah. Um, so there's no tax or penalty. You're just changing the custodian of the account. That's what we're called. And so we're a trust company. We're like a regulated financial institution at directed IRA. You want whatever self-directed custodian. If you don't pick us, just make sure you're using someone that's regulated. They have bank examiners and auditors that come into their stuff. Not all companies are unfortunately in, in the space, but th there's no penalty or fee. You're just moving from one provider of accounts to another who actually lets you buy these assets. Yeah. And when you get your money there on day two or three, and a directed IRA, you can open up your accounts online in the middle of the night, sitting in your underwear. I, it's mm -hmm. that simple. You get your account set up, the money gets there. By the way, and, that's not required. <laughs> not required. That's optional. <laughs> optional. Uh, yeah. You mean the clothing's optional or you mean you don't have to do it that way, right? Yeah, you don't have to do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, however you want to sit in your chair and open up your account, yeah. you don't have to yeah. call or it's not a pain in the butt. And once the money gets transferred over there, then on day two or three, whatever that is, they'll call and go, or you're going to call them and say, okay, now I want to invest it. 
okay, what do you want to do? And there's bi-direction letters and some procedures. Maybe you do go to the law firm and set up an LLC. Maybe it's a transaction that can be directly done by submitting paperwork to the custodian or the trust company, mm -hmm. the directed IRA. And you can do that again online uh, almost seamlessly without calling anyone. So there's some procedures and we're going to have more podcasts on how you invest in certain things and what those yeah. steps are. But what is a self-directed IRA? What let, me hit, let me hit a couple of examples. I think it, just to illustrate what people can invest in. Too. No, no, this, is like, this is like Breakfast Club. Who am I? Who, who <laughs> am I? <laughs> what is a self-directed IRA? I mean, it's gotta, there's got to be something deeper here. Yeah. It's, it's freedom. It's freedom. It is freedom. Yeah. This is it like is, milk. It's, it, what, what I love about it, and one of the things I love about it, is the satisfaction that if you invest well and do well, you did it for yourself. Mm. I feel like when you just buy a mutual fund and you're in the market, you're just kind of going with the flow. The market's up, the market's down, your account's up, your account's down. When you're self-directing, it's like, no, I am charting my own path, I'm making my mm. own course, and I get to have the sense of accomplishment when I do well. I also have to bear the, the burden if I fail at it. Yeah. But that is cool. That, I love that. That Dude, that's the American way. It's on exactly. you. Now, here, what, another one? You're a rebel. You, mm. You've got this, you've got a yeah. badge. You're saying, you know what? I am not going to do what freaking Wall Street says. I'm going to do what I say is best. And, uh, and you know what's interesting is we, Matt and I travel from East Coast to West Coast. That does tend to be more of a West of the Mississippi attitude that, that I'm going to be a little more free yeah. range. I'm going to be a little more independent. Sure. I'm going to be more of a cowboy. Yeah. Um, now we have plenty of East Coast clients self-directing. Oh my gosh. And, okay. And maybe there you go, Matt. Examples. Give us some good ones. I didn't mean to cut you off with my okay. philosophical approach. But yeah, I was deep, you know. I was deep. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> um I just want to hit some easy ones. Like, okay, well, um, one we did today, I just funded today, or I mean I funded, but I signed off on a client's deals. I I'm helping process the deals that come through um, with our team. So we had a client just doing a secured note. They lent about 50 grand, pretty straightforward, not, nothing rocket science, about 12% interest in two points. It was secured, went through a title company. And in fact, they're getting like 2.75% points on it. And oh my gosh. that's a great little deal, right? It's a loan, it's a three-year term, and they just loan the money out. They're going to get 12% interest and 2.75 uh, points on the 50,000 loan. So that's a common Crazy. one, just doing private money lending. Um, so that's one example. Okay. Um, another one was a, a client actually just bought real estate directly in their IRA. The IRA is going to be on title and own it. They have a property manager. It's a rental in Tennessee. And the IRA owns it. They have a property manager that gets the income and pays the expenses and sends the cash flow back to their IRA. And so their IRA is building up. The IRA spends the money to buy the property, but it gets all the rental income, you know, minus expenses. The property manager is going to handle those in this instance. And then when they sell the property, all that proceeds comes back into the IRA. And that's one of the things we didn't mention. When you're buying, let's say real estate, let's just go with that example. Let's say you buy a property for a hundred grand, you get 10,000 of rental income and you sell it for 150 grand a few years later. That 10,000 of rental income, that 50,000 of gain when you sell it goes all back into the account and you don't pay tax on it. It's just like when you bought Facebook stock at hundred bucks a share and you sold it at 150, right? That 150 goes back in your IRA, you don't pay tax. It's the same thing doing real estate or private company stock or notes or things like that. Yeah. Uh, a couple other examples. I was just on a phone call last week with a client of mine back East, lives in New Jersey. Ooh, New Jersey recently relocated to Florida. He got okay. sick of paying. I, I, I've known this client a good almost 10 years. He moved from New York to New Jersey, saved taxes getting out of the five boroughs. And then he's like, this sucks. And moved to Florida. And now he's paying zero state tax. I love this yeah. guy. Anyway, he's doing um, Amazon reselling. He's an Amazon affiliate and an Amazon. Um, they've got all the different acronyms from when you're yeah. selling on Amazon. He'll make a million bucks this year or more. Well, he called me because he goes, now that he's in that industry, he has other people and you get to know people. Just like Matt said, you get to know an industry and you want right, to invest yeah. in what you know best. So this yeah. guy's got all these connections. He's like, Mark, 
I'm going to start another product. I don't even want to disclose the product he's doing, attorney claim privilege, but he's making great money on Amazon selling it blow your mind. Just dumb stuff. Um, and it, it, it's legit, but just house, household goods, I'll say. Anyway, so he's got another product and he wants to set up a page, uh, set up the relationships. And once you've done it, it's always easier to do it the second and third time. Right. Yeah. So he said, Mark, uh, I've been listening to you and you told me not to make another investment. That's right. I told him not to. I told him, let your Roth IRA do it. See, there's a difference. It's called opportunity mm -hmm. shifting. I told him the next opportunity you have, stop, drop, and roll, call me. And let's see if your retirement account could do it. That's what our phone call was about. Yeah. So we're structuring an entity with a partner that's going to be providing the labor and services because we've got to be careful. You can't set up a business with your Roth to just pay yourself or you can't run it with sweat, with equity or sweat equity. And we'll talk about that in the prohibited transaction podcast. But anyway, we are structuring it so that his yeah. Roth is going to partner with a service type partner. That's going to do all the legwork on the web design and, and fulfillment and yada, yada. And his Roth IRA is it's going to be on off the chart, off the chart, mm -hmm. 10, 10 times return per year. And yeah. it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. That's how you grow a retirement account is investing in the things that you know and being strategic about the opportunities that you find. Yeah. So um, I love that. Uh, another one that I just funded yeah. we helped with that came through was a client that um, invested in a, um, this one's, we've had a few clients go into this fund. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of, a, it's a, um, it's a, let's just call it a men's health company that's doing some scientific research and, and, and having a therapeutic drug. Okay. It's not for, it's not for COVID-19. Yeah. It's I have to, to, it's to help men with certain performance issues in the bedroom. Mm, okay. And they're, right. they're throwing a lot of money at this. Cause you know what, if they get a pill for that or whatever, people will buy it. Yeah. It'll Crazy. sell. It'll yeah. sell. It'll sell like Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's still like crazy. Now here- I'm serious. That's yeah, like, yeah. we see stuff like this. And yeah. this could have been someone investing in Viagra back in the day and no one knew about it. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, no. it actually worked. And boom, there. Now, honestly, what's fun is some of these topics are hilarious and it is fun. <laughs> but, you know, this is a good transitionary point. At the very beginning, Matt said, anything allowed under law. Now, this is interesting because we've yeah. had to put the brakes on- the marijuana industry or certain aspects of it yeah, because it's not federally allowed yet. Can you comment on that? Where that, where your IRA yeah. might have a problem with that industry. Yeah. And so, I mean, States have essentially legalized it, but it's still federally illegal, you know, and it's this weird state of affairs right now where it's still federally illegal and it's a, still a controlled substance. So yeah. Um, because of that, IRAs are federally chartered accounts. There's still an issue with them owning it. You know, it's a retirement account created by federal law. So, so that's why the, where the issue is. We have had clients that own their retirement accounts own the real estate that leases to a, a cannabis company, uh, whether it's a grower yep. or a retailer, um, and that's okay. You're a re you own real estate. You're just leasing, but we don't want your IRA to own a company that actually owns the illegal product that's federally illegal. Yes, so, yeah. um, so now, that's the distinction we've drawn. Yeah, I love it. And, and, and this is the depth of knowledge and experience after 20 years of doing this, that we want you, our customer in the law firm or in the trust company to feel confident in. Be careful as you now are exposed to this to going out on the web and trying to find the cheapest place to put your self-directed IRA mm -hmm. and the cheapest place to get documents you can print out on the web because there are risks and you want to be educated on this. And I hate to use the loaded gun analogy because guns are, can be a, a very um, contentious topic, but I think <laughs> it's the, but, but forgive me. And I'm not saying this to try to be lasciduous, but, it's true that if you take a hunter safety course or a gun uh, self-defense safety course, you're going to be more responsible with the gun. Well, the Wall Street mentality is if we let you self-direct your IRA or any type of those accounts, we're giving you a loaded gun 
and there's no instruction manual, you're going to hurt somebody. And that's yeah. not true. You, you can do it safely. And, and so that's why we do challenge you that this is not one where for the, for the turnkey type mentality where you're just going to say, Oh, I'm just going to self-direct and find the website that lets me do whatever I want. That that's not what's smart. And yeah. you want to be cautious with that. Yeah. And unfortunately there's a lot of like bad information out there on the web. Like when I heard about it in 2006 from Mark, I was like, this is freaking awesome. I can't wait to get on the web and learn more about this. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. I actually read the code and that I know that doesn't make sense. And so, so it took years to figure this out. And so we're trying to educate with our newsletter and our videos and books and everything and this podcast to let you know what you can do. But like we said, it's also not rocket science. You just need to learn for what you need to know for your deals. Everybody's different. Just learn what you need to know for your deals. I don't think it takes more than two or three hours of a commitment of time to learn that much. And then you do the same thing over and over again. You bet. Now, I, I think, Matt, here's a good point to interject, if you'll allow me. I, I think there's another fallacy out there. Well, this is all nice and fine and dandy, guys, but I've only got two grand in my Roth IRA. So this isn't for me. Well, let's slow down. Um, first of all, there's a difference between saving and investing. We want you to, and this is where the other aspects of our firm and our education comes into play. We want you to get out of debt. We want you to build a side hustle or side gig. If you already are a small business owner, let's, let's be more efficient in our tax write-offs and our uh, marketing and business and strat planning. We teach a lot of business strategy and plan because we want you to make more money so you can fund and save more. So that's point number one. We want you to save so that you do have that little nest egg to, to start self-directing with. Yeah. But what's cool is we have a lot of clients that just with a few thousand dollars use strategies that don't require a lot of money initially. Wholesaling is one. You may buy low-income housing or mobile homes. You might trade or flip vehicles or uh, RVs or Again, you could be in a scenario where just a few thousand dollars can be partnered with someone else. You don't have to be all on your own. So yeah. don't be dismayed. You don't have to be yeah. rich to do this. Yeah. And one of my clients that I still have today, back in like 2006, when I really started getting into this, this is the first deal I saw where I was like, whoa, this is cool. All he did was he had a Roth IRA. He put $10,000 down on a piece of property, got an option for it was just raw land. It was agricultural next to the highway. He got a contract to purchase where he had like three to five years to buy it. And at a purchase price of about 400, 500 grand. And he's been, he gave the owner of the property 10,000 bucks, said, here's 10,000 bucks. I have an option to buy it for 400. I think it's 450 within the next five years. And the seller's like, cool. It's not even worth 300 right now. And I'll take your 10,000 bucks. You want to buy it from me? Cool. I'll buy agricultural property right next door for cheaper. And so, well, what my client knew is there was a freeway exit going in there. He's a real estate developer. This is what he knows. A couple of years later, freeway exit comes in there. This agricultural property went from agricultural to highway commercial. It's, it was now worth over one and a half million dollars. So all he was in is 10 grand with his Roth IRA. He sells the option to another developer for over a million bucks who was ready to pay 1.5 for the property. And he has a, over a million dollar return. And this happened over a few years, of course. His not over a million dollar return is Roth IRA. That was the moment I was like, this is what I'm doing. It was a Roth IRA. This was what was cool for him. It was tax-free in his Roth IRA, right? If he did that personally, he would have kept half of the money. He would have paid tax to the IRS. He would have paid tax to the state. And he got to keep all of it in his Roth IRA. And what was cool about this with this client, I mean, was it was cool in the sense that he had a cool deal. But I remember him being really pissed off. Like he was excited about how this worked and he's done, he's done amazing since as well. He was also pissed off at all the advisors that never told him he could do this. Cause this was a guy that was a real estate developer, made a lot of money, had a pretty hefty tax return, had financial advisors, had a big CPA firm, a big law firm. He's like, all of these people knew I had retirement accounts, told me to save and max them out every year, which I did. And they knew I made money doing real estate and no one connected the dots for me. He's like, I had to figure this out on myself. No one else connected the dots for me. 
And you know, I I love that I, that last point you made because sometimes I do feel like we're a maverick and I get accused of being on the fringes at times, but the people that are making that accusation are so far on the other extreme that I look crazy. Where the reality is there are millions of dollars, trillions of dollars in retirement accounts. This, 30 trillion, 30 trillion in retirement accounts in the US. Yeah. And there, this concept of self-directing has been around since when ERISA and IRAs and 401ks were created. Yeah. The, that was in the initial law. They said, we don't want to restrict it to just Wall Street. Let anybody invest in any of these things. But Wall Street created a, a financial model that worked for them and then just dominated the airwaves and the-, the Exactly. And, and it's sad. So this is not a fringe deal. Matt and I are legitimate licensed lawyers. I'm a CPA in at least five states, a lawyer in two, and we're in a legitimate law firm accounting firm with malpractice insurance authors. Uh, we don't have a target on our back with the IRS or we hope not. No one's ever knocked on our door and said we're crazy or um, this is yeah. this is legitimate mainstream stuff. And so don't be like, you know, it's an odd common reaction to like try to find a fault in someone when you don't have all the secret sauce. Right, well, yeah. the reality is you've had some bad advisors. If, you, if you're just hearing about this now and you're that successful as a, and you're a listener, and you're a little ticked off right now, yeah, probably just <laughs> probably so. Call your advisor and go, yeah. what the freak? Yeah. You know? You're also not alone. And I'll say this. There's been a lot more advisors over the years, particularly as the RA model has came about, and they're not making money on trading your account. They're making money on just managing no matter what it's in. Um, we've seen a lot more IRAs be much. We've got a lot of clients that, that are themselves are financial advisors. I've got a number and a number that refer to us for people who self-direct their account. Um, cause they've, they've really grasped this, uh, this subject. So, um, all right. I want to make just a couple other points okay. and then I'm, I'm done. You can make all right. your, I'll think, points. I'll think, I'll think deep here. Okay. If there's anything else to help on yeah. what is a self director? Oh, I got one. Okay. Yeah. And, and we're going to have details on this, of course, right? We're going to have all the rules and stuff, but I just want to make the financial point. When you're talking about your IRA buying something like an asset and then we're talking about investments. Okay. Your IRA does not buy personal assets. So when we say real estate, we're not talking about your IRA buying real estate you live in. All right. Retirement accounts have to own investments, investment assets, but it could buy a rental. It could buy a property you flip. It could invest in a startup or a, a private company. Like I had another client around COVID that loaned money on a bunch of bars that shut down. And he took they did a loan that he could convert to stock. He said, you know what? These bars have been around for years. They're all shut down because of COVID, but these were vibrant, successful businesses. And I wanted to help them get through this time when they had to shut down. They still got lease expenses and other costs. I wanted to help them get through it, but I want to convert this to equity later. And so that's an investment. You can be creative on the deals that you see in your community or just in your, in your area of expertise. So, but we're talking about investment assets, not personal assets. Yep. Last point for me, keep in mind, I'm going to go full circle to my very first comment. And that is, this is not just an IRA or a Roth. For example, no. my health savings account is self-directed. Now think about that for a minute. Whoa, I, I get a write-off to put money in my health savings account at the on the front page of my tax return. I have the right type of health insurance. I can build the HSA, take out money anytime for qualified medical expenses. I don't have to wait till I'm 59 and a half. I can put money in right now at age 22 and take it out three months later or three days later. No taxes, no penalty. I get a write-off and any money I earn in that HSA is tax-free. Now, I've, Matt and I will get in debates on who thinks what's more cool, a Roth or an HSA. Mm -hmm. And we usually come to a truce because they're so both freaking cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a huge HSA fan. And it was about eight years ago, I opened up a health savings account, self-directed, put in about four or five grand. That was how much you could put in it back then. Now, in a, as a family in, two, in 2020, you can put in $7,100. I put in around four grand found a, uh, a contact that we'd been working with for years out in Chicago, a low-income housing project. It was 40 grand. 
the seller would carry the note. I put down 10%, 4,000, and it cash flows a couple hundred a month ever since then. It's a Section 8 rental, federally subsidized rent from the government. And it's just, it's a cute little meth lab. I mean, everybody would want one. I mean, it's adorable. And yeah. I, these guys are great. They pay rent in a paper bag and um, some call them drug dealers. I call them entrepreneurs. They're just yeah. great guys. Um, just in really pharmaceutical fair. cells. Yeah, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical cells. cells. Yeah, no, I no, no, of course not. But <laughs> it is a cute little grandma on the street that's spending for her lives with bars on the windows. But, but anyway, <laughs> I, I've had that rental ever since. I still do. Paid for my yeah. kids' braces, tax free. Yeah, there you go. There That's you. cool. So, so you can see the complexity of this, and and Mark actually has an LLC with that, and I have a my four hundred one k account actually owns an LLC that owns a rental property. It's a single family rental. And we'll, so, well, you can talk about some of the stuff we have too that I think just helps illustrate how it works. That's the best way I think to learn is just here's some examples. Um, and we're going to go through these in the different investment types through the podcast, but. Um, now, of course, I want to say where you can go for info. You go to markjkohler.com. He's got tons of articles and YouTube videos too. You can find them on YouTube. Um, SDIRA Handbook, that's Self-Directed IRA Handbook. Get the SDIRA book. SDIRAHandbook.com. Start there, people. Get the book, SDIRA, Self-Directed IRA Handbook.com. If Matt doesn't say it forcefully, I will. I make no money off you buying his dumb book. I will sign it for you. But uh, no, you want to start with his book because it will be a desktop reference and yeah. uh, it'll be a huge resource to you as you get more and it, more. Familiar. It literally is. It's the number one book in the field. It's sold 25,000 copies. Um, everyone who buys it loves it. For, I, I'm just saying that if you're interested in this subject, sometimes my friends are like, you wrote a book. Should I buy your book? And I'm like, mm, are you interested in self-directing your IRA? Nope. Don't buy my book. <laughs> But it's like, it's kind of like the best book on karate. You know, like if you're into karate, when you find the best book on karate, you love the book. Yeah. If you're not into karate, the best book on karate sucks. You don't care. So that's what my book is. So if you're into this, you'll like it, I think. Is that fair? I think. So if you're the best book on vampires, Eclipse, mm -hmm. fair enough. I don't know. Stephanie Myers. Yeah, so probably. Matt is the Stephanie Myers of self-directed IRAs. I'm just going to go there. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. All right. Uh, and then, of course, directedira.com, um, where this podcast, you're going to be able to find directedira.com slash podcast for um, other shows and episodes. We're going to put more content on there. And, of course, directedira.com is our company where we set up all these different self-directed accounts where you can actually get the account going and start actually doing this. Yeah. Well, Matt, thanks for – I'm going to say thanks to you on behalf of all of our listeners. If it wasn't for Matt Sorensen spearheading and the creation of Directed IRA, he's the CEO, he's amazing. I'm just the lowly CFO at the end of the table, you know, with the glasses and a pencil. But Matt Sorensen is the, the captain of the ship. He's awesome. And he's done so much to help people take control of their own retirement, take control of their future, teach their children about this. We're yeah. gonna have a show on Acorns, and it, Matt's going to hate it, but we will mm -hmm. on how you save and then transition to self-directing. It's going to be awesome. But I, I have uh, the acorns. Up. I got it. I have it. <laughs> you can have an acorns Roth account. Start now saving because when you start saving, you're going to want to start self-directing. Acorns is oh Matt. Acorns is the gateway drug to self-directing. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Pen drop. Yeah. I need a pen. Yeah. So let's start pushing that. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks, well, thanks everybody. everyone for being here. Um, we're going to be back again. Keep listening. We're going to start breaking down what are prohibited transactions, which are some of these rules that talk about who can your IRA transact with. We'll talk about IRA LLCs. Some people call them checkbook IRAs. We'll talk about solo 401ks. Some of the tax issues you can run into called UBIT or UBTI tax. See, there's a little rules here. I got a chapter in my book on each of these. Mark's written on all this stuff too, but we're really going to break it down um, and hopefully do it in a fun, easy to understand way. Um, keep it light because we know what it's like to learn these types of topics uh, when we got into it too. So yeah. thanks everyone. Then. We'll see you. See you next episode. Until yeah. then self-direct on. Is that right? Yeah. Matt? Is that our slogan? Yeah. Stay calm and self-direct on. <laughs>